In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we remember the Smith and Hafner families at this Mass and celebrate Our Lady of the Rosary, recalling in particular a historic battle at the Battle at Lepanto, in which the uh, victory of the Christian forces over the Muslim forces was attributed in part to the intercession of the Blessed Mother and to the recitation of the Rosary. Uh, so this feast day enters into our calendar as, a, as an emphasis of that great gift that we have of the Rosary as a means of prayer and uh, a great source of contemplation and growth in the spiritual life. So it's a good thing for us to always to hold on to. Uh, and so let us enter into these sacred mysteries with confidence as we turn to the Lord first asking for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, realize that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture, which saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, Through you shall all the nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed, along with Abraham, who had faith. For all who depend on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all the things written in the book of the law. And that no one is justified before God by the law is clear, for the one who is righteous by faith will live. But the law does not depend on faith, rather the one who does these things will live by them. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Our response oral psalm, The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. The Lord will remember his covenant forever.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest. But finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that man is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In the first reading today, St. Paul continues his argument with the Galatians, um, presenting them with uh, two concepts. He talks about faith and he talks about the law. And uh, he uses a number of citations of Scripture. In fact, he, he's citing the Old Testament at least five times in this brief passage that we heard today. Um, so in order to bolster his arguments, so he supports them by turning to Scripture. And he highlights the importance of faith, especially the example of faith that we see in Abraham. Through him, we have the promise that we have inherited also by faith. Then he also talks about the law and the curse of the law. Everyone who is bound by the law is under a curse. And that includes Jesus Christ, who took that curse upon himself when he hung upon a tree and he was crucified on the cross um, so that he set us free. And it's an interesting um, question to ask then is why would this be something that would be so important to St. Paul that he would spend so much time emphasizing the critical, essential nature of faith and that we should not put our trust merely in the works of the law. I mean, one of the things that we do say is that when a person believes, and when they have faith, of course, they'll want to live their lives in accordance with that faith. So it makes sense that we would, in fact, be concerned with our moral conduct. Um, so why the emphasis? Why be so strident? Why be so strong in focusing on faith and putting that above the observance of the law? And maybe one answer to that question could be that when we do the works of the law, when we're focused on our own actions, we're looking at ourselves, we're looking at what we do. But when we, do, when we turn to faith, faith is the belief in God, and that, looks at, that turns our direction not inward to ourselves, but outward toward the Lord. It's part of what we'll do on First Friday when we have adoration. We turn our gaze to the Lord. We don't look to ourselves, we look to the Lord. So faith maybe is uh, something that is particularly important because it focuses us toward God and outside of ourselves rather than on our own actions or our own deeds, our own observance of the rules or the laws that have been handed down. And so I suppose maybe there is something to be said about that. Not that, not, like I said, we still do want to make sure that we live in a moral way. Um, and in fact, when we go through our RCIA or OCIA classes, uh, we do talk about the faith. We start with the creed. We talk about how we pray. We go through the sacraments. Then we get to the way in which we live. We go through the commandments. We'll teach them the law. We're going to talk about the law when we go through those classes. But notice the order in which they come. We start with what we believe, and then we move to how we pray, and then we move to how we live, the way in which we live. So faith, even in the catechism, faith comes first. 
And the law only comes later, comes in that third part after we get through the creed and sacraments and then the commandments. Uh, and then finally, the Our Father in prayer. So why is that order important? I think maybe another reason to, to answer that question, why is St. Paul so, so um, strong in, in the uh, opinions he's expressing here? I think it's because faith has to come before the law because it's the thing that gives a foundation to the law. If we don't know who the Lord is and we're just simply practicing the law, then we're doing so in a kind of mindless way. And I think maybe that's part of the trouble that the Galatians were in. They were told the law, but they weren't given any basis then to understand why that law had been handed down. Instead, we believe first and foremost, and because we believe, we live in a certain way. So uh, the way in which we practice our faith is informed by the faith itself. The faith really comes first. And maybe that's, maybe that's another deeper reason why St. Paul does what he does today. So we understand the, uh, the gift that we have received from the Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, the gift of faith, and that he has freed us from the Old Testament law, that we are no longer under that constraint. Um, and yet at the same time, we desire to serve the Lord. And so let us do so, not because we've been ordered to by some outside set of commands, but because we choose to, because we love the Lord Jesus. And so that becomes the basis then for us to observe the Lord's commands, and his greatest command is that of love. Um, and so just a, a brief reflection as we think about these gifts. Today we can ask the Lord to strengthen our faith by spending time before the Blessed Sacrament, to strengthen our faith especially by turning to the Mother of God, um, and especially through the recitation of the Holy Rosary, which is a wonderful spiritual practice for us as well. We stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and for the holy people of God that our faith in Jesus Christ may grow ever stronger. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray that we might put our faith into practice, especially by, by bearing witness to others, to draw more souls to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all of those preparing to enter the church at the Easter Vigil, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And we pray for the sick, the suffering, for the poor, for those in need of God's grace, um, especially for those uh, who may be close to despair. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Hafner and Smith families for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And for the freedom of the Church, we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightly conformed in these offerings we bring, and so honor the mysteries of your only begotten Son, as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid and gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we, are, we proclaim in this sacrament the death and resurrection of your Son, so being made partakers in his suffering, we may also merit a share in his consolation and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So adoration will continue, of course, until 7 p.m. this evening. And so uh, we look forward to this opportunity of spending time with the Lord. Um, to prepare ourselves and especially to honor Our Lady on this feast day of the Rosary, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.